DM. Welcome to this episode of Solana Bytes. And in this series, we're looking at all of the extensions on the Token 2022 program. In this episode, we're looking at the permanent delegate token mint extension. So with the token program, the mint may contain a freeze authority, which can be used to render an account practically unusable. So when an account is frozen, any instruction involving that account will fail until that account is reactivated, or shall we say, thawed. So one of the uses of these freeze authority amongst many, people often use it to freeze a particular token so that they can add custom logic to, let's say, a transfer. But another use case, which is something that, let's say, a stablecoin issue would use, is to freeze these accounts that are linked to sanctioned individuals or linked to particular wallet hacks. So whilst the attacker cannot benefit from the tokens, there's no means for restitution or a way to like retrieve or get those tokens back. So with Token 2022, it's actually possible to specify a permanent account delegate for Mint. This authority now has unlimited delegate privileges over any account associated with that Mint, meaning that it can burn or transfer any amount of tokens for any account for that given Mint. So this is a very powerful feature, but its implications have to be clearly stated for both users and app developers. So whilst previously tokens could be frozen if there was a security breach, but again, there was no way to seize those tokens, this um, permanent delegate actually now has the authority and the capability to transfer those tokens back. So now that the permanent delegate pretty much has unlimited powers, if those keys are ever compromised, the attacker can literally have control over all of the token accounts. So it's a... I believe it's going to be a very divisive feature, but it does have like some unique use cases that it opens up. So let's take a look at how this actually works. So in the script that we have running, we first are creating a new token mint with the permanent delegate extension applied. We then create two new token accounts so that we can show an example of how to transfer from one token account to another using the delegate as the signing authority. So then second, we then mint a uh, thousand tokens to this new account, and then we transfer the tokens via the delegate. So let's first of all, take a look at the mint on SoulScan. Just look at that on DevNet. So we can see that uh, for this particular mint, we have the permanent delegate set. Um, and yeah, we have a, a different mint authority for this particular mint, but the permanent delegate is set to this particular account. So now let's take a look at the token account. So we'll be able to see that we initially minted a hundred tokens, and then we were able to transfer five of those tokens out using the delegate, which is this particular transaction that you can see here. So if we actually look at this full transaction signature, again, we'll see that the token was transferred not from the original account, but it's showing that it was, it was transferred from the permanent delegate into another account. So again, with the permanent delegate, this um, signing authority can move any amount of tokens from any account that is related to that mint. So let's actually jump into the code and see how that looks like. So we're going to create a new directory, call this one demo. We're going to CD into it. We're going to init a new NPM project. And we're going to go ahead and install the required libraries. Oh, now let's open this up in VS Code. So let us just change this to type module so that we can use index.mjs. Cool. And then add some TypeScript helpers to our JavaScript file. So first things first, we need to establish a connection to the DevNet cluster 
Then we need to generate a new pay account and fund it since that's going to pay for all of our transactions. And then we're going to create a new token mint and then apply the permanent delegate extension to that mint. So const connection equals And we have a payer generate. Then we want to airdrop. Oh, wait, action the request airdrop from payer dot public key, and we'll just take one soul for this. Then wait, action um, transaction. The signature is the airdrop, and then we need the block hash. Cool. So now that we have that set up out of the way, let's now create um, the codes that we need for our mint. So we now have a new mint key pair. We then get the address, because this is going to be the address for our mint. The amount of decimals, we'll just set the default to nine. We'll create a mint authority. Then we're going to create the key, or sorry, the key pair that we're going to use for our permanent delegate. Then we're going to work out the amount of land ports we'll need to be rent exempt for this particular account that has the permanent delegate extension applied. So we get mint len equals get mint len. This takes an array of extensions. We would only be adding the one for permanent delegate. Then we work out the amount of land ports needed. And that's mint len. Awesome. So now that we have all of that set up, now we just need to build the set of instructions that, we'll, that we need. So the first is to create the account. Use a system program. We have from pop key, which is the payer. We have the new account pub key, which is the mint. We have the space, which is the mint len. We have the lamp ports. And then finally, the program ID. Then we now need to initialize the permanent delegate instruction on this particular account. For that, we use the helper function, uh, permanent delegate, which takes a mint. It takes the public key of the permanent delegate. And of course, the program ID, which is the token 22 program. And now finally, we just create um, uh, the initialize mint instruction. Instruction.
inspection, the inspection, the signers, which will need the payer as one, and the mint keeper. And we can just set this to undefined. So let's go ahead and log the signature and let's it. Oh. So let's take a look at this on SourceScan and see what's happening. So again, we can see that we created an account. Um, we then applied the permanent delegate extension to it. And then we initialized the mint. So if we to take a look at that mint, we'll see that, yep, this is created as a, um, a token mint. And we can see that we have this permanent delegate set. So now any token account um, that is created, this particular sign authority has the ability to burn and transfer tokens from any one of those accounts. So as we can see, whilst this can be a very divisive extension, mainly because it can be abused if users are not aware that the token that they are interacting with has a permanent delegate. But actually this now opens up um, some new use cases. These use cases are pretty much centered around if somebody has access to a token, but isn't participating or is no longer active, that token can be removed from them so that they can lose that, that access. So for example, think of a subscription service where a company could issue tokens as access passes to that service. And now if a user doesn't renew their subscription, the permanent delegates could automatically revoke their access. This could also be good for DAOs. I'm thinking of Super Team DAO here. So for example, um, they could use this feature to ensure that members continue to be active by let's say um, participating in voting or other community related activities. Therefore, inactive members could have their tokens automatically revoked or redistributed to other members. So it's got um, some quite cool use cases, but again, I think users and app developers need to make it clear that this particular token that you're interacting with has the permanent delegate extension applied. So join us again for the next episode where we look at another extension that was added to the Token22 program. I'm Colin from the Solana Developer Relations team. Until next time.